There are those things in life that stick with you. Questions that keep you up late into the night, troubling you to your core. Unanswered mysteries that haunt you like a stubborn ghost, always in the back of your mind. An angry spectre, unwilling to die. The disappearance of my best friend, Eva Hoskins, and the unexplainable circumstances of our final few calls have served as my ghost. It's something I've dwelled on for years, asking myself questions I knew I could never answer, trying to make sense of that final day, those final calls. Well, like everyone else right now, I found myself alone at home with nothing but free time, and with free time comes the ghosts. I've had enough of tormenting myself, trying to make sense of something that I believe most likely defies any conventional explanations. Evan and I spoke on the day he disappeared. I was actually the last person he ever spoke to, as far as anyone knows. The knowledge was always accompanied by a significant weight, made only worse by the things he said. Strange, confusing things that I've yet to make sense of even now. Maybe you will have better luck. Perhaps you can explain what happened to Evan. Are you seeing this damn snow, dude? Evan's voice called from my phone in place of a greeting. I chuckled at a very abrupt, very Evan greeting. Wincing and lowering the volume on my phone appropriately in preparation for a conversation with my lively friend. At the time, I didn't notice it. And maybe even now, I'm misremembering, creating details my mind assumed should have been. I guess I can't know for sure. But looking back, it felt as though his statement was infused with far more panic than surprise. Most people start conversations with the word hello, Ev, I answered with a smirk that I was sure he could hear in my voice. I leaned forward, grabbing the remote from my coffee table to mute the television. The woman on the news had been talking about the very snowstorm Evan was calling me about, using words like record-breaking and unprecedented to describe it, urging people to stay in their homes. I'd heard enough, deciding I'd had my fill of bad news for the day, and rose from the couch, making my way toward the window. Yeah, hi, whatever dude, are you seeing this though? Evan responded, mild annoyance bleeding into the urgency in his voice. I laughed, pulling the curtains aside as I made my way to the window. I peered out into the parking lot of my apartment complex, and I immediately understood why Evan had called. Yeah, that's... a lot, I muttered, peering outside. The world outside was unrecognizable, plunged under a maelstrom of snow and ice completely transforming the landscape. The roads outside of my apartment were almost wholly obstructed from my view, hidden under a blanket of falling snow and ice. But, from what I could see, it was empty. It made sense, especially given the hazardous weather conditions, and I was glad to see people were staying safe and off the roads. But, there was an eeriness to it that I was happy to have Evan distract me from. How long does this kind of stuff usually last for, man? Blizzards? It depends, I guess, I said, poring over mental images of past blizzard experiences trying to come up with some estimate. A couple hours usually. Evan sighed, muttering nervous expletives to himself for a while before taking a deep breath. A part of me wanted to tease my friend. He was a California kid who had moved here for college and he hated the cold as it was. It seemed to me that Colorado winters might have been more than he bargained for. I instead allowed what little maturity I had to take effect and elected to be a somewhat decent friend and tried to calm him. You good man? Yeah, yeah, fine, he said, though his voice sounded far from it. I tried to sympathize with his position. He'd just seen snow for the first time earlier in the year, and without warning, I could see how a snowstorm, especially to this extent, could be frightening. And though a smaller, terrible side of me still wanted to tease him, for how much he seemed to be freaking out, I mostly felt bad for him. 
Leaving home for college must have been tough for Evan. The loneliness contributing much anxiety in his first few months here. And I could only imagine it was made worse isolated at home in the storm. It's gonna be okay dude, trust me. I started, admittedly unsure of what to say. I know mom. He responded with his usual sarcasm, pausing for a moment. Damn dude, it's just... I've never seen anything like it. I furrowed my brow, an involuntary frown creeping onto my face. It wasn't like Evan to be so nervous. He was notorious among our group of friends for his boldness. Evan didn't care. He'd do what he wanted and let the consequences follow as they might. Sometimes he seemed brave, other times just stupid. But this was entirely out of character for him. Look, listen, I started, combing my mind for some reassuring comment, some words to quell the sudden and unexplainable feeling of discomfort Evan's call had stirred in me. I couldn't understand his panic, though I had to admit it was slightly contagious. It's no different than any other storm. Literally, just stay inside and you've got no real problem, I said making an effort not to sound as though I was talking down to him. There was a long pause, and for a moment, I questioned whether the call had been dropped. As if in response, Evan broke the silence with a long, deliberate sigh. Thanks, Andrew, he muttered. For real. His statement rang with a surprising sincerity, as if my poor attempt to calm him truly meant a lot to him. I appreciated it, but it only served to exasperate the weirdness of the entire situation, which I so desperately wanted to quell. No problem, Ev, I began. How about we fire up the Playstations and just mess about until this is over? Y yeah Yeah, okay. I stayed on the phone with him as we turned our attention away from the weather and towards video games. So, what are we playing? I asked grabbing the remote of my game console and sinking back into the couch. Evan didn't reply. I waited for a few moments, expectation slowly morphing into confusion. Uh, Evan? Sorry man, I just... Evan started, his voice quickly tapering off. Evan, are you alright? You're starting to worry me a bit. Like, actually worry. There was a pause, followed by the shuffling sounds of movement from Evan's end of the line, before his distractive reply. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. It's just... Again, he trailed off. I sat up in my seat, suddenly quite unable to relax as I waited for Evan to finish his sentence, or to say anything. I just thought... I thought I... heard something out there. Evan spoke slowly, increasing suspicion audible in every word. Heard what? Where? I questioned. Evan's area was a sparsely populated, nondescript little area just outside of town, and it was hard to imagine anyone outside in this weather. The side of the house, I... maybe a coyote or something? Do we have those here? he said. That, and much more. If there's one thing we have, is extensive wildlife, and you live right along a forest. He paused, considering my statement for a moment, before quickly suggesting we continue on with our game. It was clear that Evan was still worried, still scared. Scared of the blizzard, or the noises he said he heard. I wasn't sure. But he wasn't okay. That much was clear to me. Still, I knew Evan. There was nothing I could say to him that would serve as a better distraction than some good old simulated violence. So I agreed, and we ended the call. I returned to my couch, putting on the gaming headset my friends had peer pressured me into buying, awaiting an invitation to Evan's game chat. I sat back, my mind drifting involuntarily back to Evan's call. On the surface, there was nothing outwardly too strange about it. 
Still, I found myself staring outside, my mind lost in that blizzard, in the vast nothingness. I shivered, attempting to swallow down the constricting feeling of claustrophobia. A sudden voice in my ear made my heart drop into a pit in my chest, panic shooting through me. Hey, Evan called from over the headset. Relief rushed through me, outpaced only by silent embarrassment and my fearfulness. What are we playing? I asked, trying to stifle the slight shake in my voice as my heart rate returned to normal. We spent a few minutes finding a game, and almost an hour after that, racing around virtual worlds in an effort to ignore our own, the game served the purpose of distraction. For me at least, perhaps a little too well. I was focused on the racing simulator we were playing, and my anxiety from Evan's call had almost entirely faded from the forefront of my thoughts. Had I been paying more attention, I would have sooner noticed how quiet Evan had gotten. I frowned, realizing it had been a while since he'd last spoken in the game chat. As if he had heard my thoughts, Evan spoke, his words both confusing and scaring me. I think there's someone out there, dude. Something. The words seemed to hang there for a brief moment as I searched dumbly for a response. To be completely honest, I've always been close to useless in stressful situations, and the one at hand was one I was not at all prepared for. It didn't matter. Evan spoke again before the silence could settle. I've been trying to ignore this man, but for the entire time we've been playing, I've heard sounds outside in the forest. At first, they kind of blended with the wind, and it was easier to ignore. He began, speaking with a panicked quickness. But that's not the wind, and it's sure as hell no coyote, Evan said with grave seriousness. I lowered the controller, the game no longer a pressing concern for either of us, and crossed the living room resting against the wall nearest the window. The elements had conspired to put on a show, it seemed. The snow falling in seemingly endless amounts made only worse by the powerful winds that had turned it into a violent flurry. I was beginning to understand how someone could find the experience disquieting, perhaps even terrifying. What are you hearing, Evan? I was met with footsteps from Evan's end followed by the sound of an opening window. When Evan spoke, it was to breathe a single word. Listen. I waited, hearing only the roar of wind in my headphones. I pictured Evan leaning forward with his headset sticking out of the window and almost laughed at the absurdity of the image. As I opened my mouth to comment, to make some tension-diffusing joke, I began to hear something. The sounds were faint at first, rendered nearly inaudible as the blizzard raged on, and I strained myself to make out what exactly I was hearing. I squinted, the sound slowly coming into focus over the noise of the snowstorm. Slowly, I began to understand what I was hearing. Voices. Several of them by the sounds of it. All were growing less and less faint, all moving closer and closer. Are those... are there people out there? I asked my question, one of genuine shock and confusion. I couldn't understand why or how anyone could be out there right now, and especially in Evan's neighbourhood, which was much more densely forested than my own. It sounds like it, he muttered keeping his voice low as we listened. As awful as it may sound, I wanted to hang up. The feeling of dread that was beginning to dawn on me in those moments was like nothing I'd ever felt before, as something inside me began to scream out a warning to me. This is wrong. I swallowed, gritting my teeth as the voices drew nearer. Do you see anyone? I asked him, not sure what answer I wanted to receive. No, he muttered. It's a blizzard. I can barely see anything, man. 
This is freaking me out. I sympathised with Evan's words, feeling much the same myself, although I knew I shouldn't relay that information to him. The strange instinct still gnawed at me, some parts of me wanting very much for Evan to leave, to get away from his home, away from whatever strange folk may be traversing the woods at this time. I racked my brain, unsure of what to say. Evan spoke before I could. His words hurried and panicked, only served to worsen the emerging sense of dread I was feeling. I can hear them, man. I can hear them talking out there. They're coming closer. I don't know, man. Call someone. I started, utterly unsure of what to say. None of it made sense. Who would be out there in the forest during a storm like this? I stared out into the snowy beyond and shivered at the thought of people just beyond the glass, staring back. Evan gave a sarcastic laugh. Call who? The cops? And say what? He asked, anger rising his voice. 911, I think I hear people walking through the woods. That's not exactly a crime, man. Plus, nobody's on my property as far as I can tell. I recoiled at the anger in his voice, though I understood fear was responsible for it. I guess you're right. I just... I don't know what to say. I sighed, lamenting my inability to help my best friend. I heard him sigh, likely regretting the outburst. I'm sorry, man. I'm just... His voice broke, and he took another breath, taking some time to compose himself before finishing very, very freaked. I get it. To be completely honest, me too. This all feels very weird to me, I replied honestly. I wanted to help Evan in some way, to find some yet unseen solution that would dispel the strangeness of the night, but all I could do in the current situation was sympathize and try not to let him feel alone. I'm just going to close the window and... I don't know. I'll leave the lights on so the house looks more occupied, Evan said, though I could tell the idea did very little to comfort him. Makes sense. You still want to play more after? Nah, he murmured, his voice dispirited. Not really in the mood. Yeah, I understand. I'll call you. Cool. And with that, Evan ended the game chat. I sighed lowering my head into my palms, my mind littered with concerns. I was worried about more than just the strange people heard wandering Evan's forest, but Evan himself. The situation seemed to be wearing on his mental condition significantly, something that I knew wasn't good for him. I found myself thinking while awaiting his call, memories like dry tinder stoking the fires of worry in my mind. I thought of a game we played a few months prior after one too many joints, swapping of stories to see who had the most traumatic experience. It was a silly, morbid idea, but that was the kind of stupid thing we did. I'd given him a spirited and emotional telling of discovering my girlfriend had cheated on me in high school, which I finished with some extra dramatic flair. Evan had chuckled at my story, muttering a, nice, in appreciation of my delivery before responding with tales of his struggles. I don't feel it's my place to say too much about exactly what he went through. The very least, the very least I can give him is that basic human privacy. Still, in a broad sense, Evan had struggled with depression, anxiety, and a myriad of related afflictions from a young age, and it hadn't been easy. By the story of his third hospitalization, I was silent, staring dumbly as I searched for some answer, some words I could say to express my sympathy. I remember the silence lasting a moment as Evan took another long puff of his joint. When he exhaled, smoke obscuring his face for a moment, he chuckled, which quickly became a cough. He spoke a few seconds later, a sly grin on his face as he muttered, Guess I win. I laughed softly under my breath, though an expanding sense of melancholy began to consume what little I found funny about the conversation. 
My best friend had been through enough in life, burdened with so much over his relatively short life. I prayed to whatever was listening that night, he would not be afflicted with more. I sat on the edge of the couch, glancing at my phone. 8.32, the time read. Evan still hadn't called, and I was beginning to feel the weight of the stress, mental exhaustion from the events of the day taking effect as sleep began to tug at the corners of my consciousness and pull my mind adrift. I swiftly fell into sleep. I was startled awake by the blare of my ringtone, a cold shock ripping through my body as I jolted awake. I cursed myself for the volume of my ringtone, which I never remembered to put down after taking my headphones out. I no longer felt that way as the screen of my phone came to life. The final ring of the phone chimed through the air, gone before I could react, and I saw the time. 9.30 my heart froze, and as I saw the notifications, it fell entirely. 16 missed calls, 29 messages, 7 voicemails, all from the same person, Evan. Damn it, I spat, sitting upward with such force it made me dizzy as I grabbed my phone and immediately clicked Evan's call notifications. The phone rang and rang and rang, every second allowing the agonizing anticipation to bloom larger until it felt as though the sensation would make me burst. Come on, come on, I begged into the line as if my words would carry across the signal and answer for him. Finally, on what felt as though it would have been the final ring, the call was answered. I waited for some response, but heard only silence from Evan's end. As I listened closer, I began to realize in the quiet, there was breathing. Evan? I called into the line, no longer making any attempt to conceal my panic. Evan's breathing grew louder. When he spoke, his voice was low and quivering, unrecognizable from the outwardly bold and brash attitude that was typical of him. He sounded scared for his life. They're everywhere, he rasped, desperation hanging to every word. They're all around the house, surrounding the house, all of them, out there, in the snow. His words chilled me to my core as I struggled to make sense of what he was saying. Evan, are you being attacked? The words came as my mind pieced together what was being said. I see them. Evan spoke with a raspiness in his voice that hadn't been present in the calls before. See, who Evan? Who's out there? My heartbeat was deafening in my own head as the images of masked men emerging from the snow, forcing their way into Evan's home, armed with weapons and evil intent, filled my mind. They don't know it, but I can see them, all standing out there, standing in the snow. There's so many of them, Andrew. I swallowed, a strange new fear taking root as Evan's manic speech continued, and I began to wonder just what had happened while I slept. What had driven him to this state? I'd had enough, and I needed an answer. I needed to know what was going on. Evan... I need a straight answer right now. Is someone breaking into your house? Do I need to call the police? I don't know what I expected to hear in response. Evan laughed. Cackled is a more appropriate term. It was short and harsh, but when he spoke, his voice was hollow, hopeless. The police? He said the words as though it was the first time he'd ever heard of such a thing. You don't think I tried? I called them half an hour ago, and nothing, not even a busy signal. I blinked, trying to process what he was telling me. He had tried to call the police? 
just how bad had things gone in my absence. Evan, I began, my voice strained with a forced calmness. What happened? Evan's breathing slowed as he tried to calm himself and respond. When we got off the game, I went around the house turning all the lights on like I said I would. And for a while, I just waited and listened. The house settled, the windows and walls creaked against the storm. But other than that, it was silent. The talking was gone. As Evan proceeded, the hairs on my back slowly began to rise and I felt compelled to close my curtains, the continual barrage of white feeling as though it was closing in, pressing ever closer. He continued. I thought whoever was out there had left, and that I could just worry about this damn blizzard. But they just wanted me to feel safe, to lower my guard. With every word Evan spoke, the deepening chasm of dread that had formed in me widened. My mouth felt dry, and my head pounded with fear for my friend's well-being. Evan rattled on, his delivery growing faster and less articulate by the second. Manic excitement evident in his voice. They were everywhere, Andrew. Banging on the doors and the windows and the damn roof. Screaming and pleading and begging and promising and... His voice broke, followed by low sobbing from his end. Something in me shattered as I heard my best friend begin to cry. His sobs were deep and hopeless. When he spoke, somehow, the loneliness rang out in his voice like a bell, hollow and cold. They want me to come outside, Andrew. They want me to join them in the snow. There are so many, so many. Can you hear them? Don't. Do not go out there, Evan. I had no idea what may await him outside in the storm, but every fibre of my being screamed for me to warn him plead for him to stay in the house. There was a repetitive series of slamming noises echoing from all around Evan, who muttered to himself inaudibly. Images sprang to my mind as I began to understand what I was hearing. Armies of figures moving through the snow, surrounding Evan's home, which stood with light pouring from its windows like some strange lighthouse in the vast white nothingness. Droves of shadows spilled from the surrounding woods under cover of darkness and concealed by snow, driving their fists into the windows and walls of the house. Evan! I called into the phone, raising my voice as the sounds around him seemed to grow in their intensity and violence. His response was almost impossible to hear above the surrounding clamour, and I had to strain myself to make out what he was saying. His voice was faint, just above a whisper, was filled with something I hadn't heard from him all night. Some strange, delirium-fueled joy. It sounds... nice out there. They all sound so... happy. I could feel it, in those few words. I knew that Evan was lost to me. Still, I refused to give up. Moisture sprang into my eyes, as an impending sense of loss began to wash over me. From the other end, I heard the sound of a door open, followed by the roar of rushing wind. I knew what it was doing. I knew that I was too late, that whatever was out there had firmly planted its hooks in Evan's mind, that my friend was already gone to me, lost to the blizzard like the voices that called to him. I'm sorry, man, Evan spoke. The unnatural calm in his voice seemed alien against the cacophony of sounds on his end. I have to go. Whoever, or whatever surrounded his home, began to cheer and whoop and holler as Evan brought himself closer and closer to the doorway. A captive and encouraging audience. I didn't know what else to say. I believe this was when he stepped out. The roar of the storm grew louder, ringing in my ears, as if I'd stepped out into the blizzard myself. 
the cheers and cries of the otherworldly crowd disappeared with such suddenness, I would have thought the call had ended, had it not been for the howling of the wind. Andrew? Damn, why am I out here? Jesus, it's freezing! He spoke again, with sudden fear and lucidity. My heart leapt at hearing Evan speak again, sounding like himself, though confused and horrified at his current situation. I had no time to explain things to Evan, who seemed to have forgotten leaving his house, knowing that whatever had caused this strange behaviour was still out there. Get in the house, Evan! There's something out there! Jesus, I see them! Evan spoke, his voice shaking with some fusion of awe and horror. Evan, please go! I said through gritted teeth, filled with hopeless frustration. I... I'm sorry, bud. Evan muttered, sounding resigned to a fate I refused to accept. I think they're taking me now. Before I could speak, there was a sound, deafening even over the speakers of my phone, a mechanical echo reverberating from all around him. My head pounded. The strange sound, like some mechanized explosion, was gone, leaving silence in its wake. I don't know how long I sat there, dazed, some part of me hoping to hear Evan's voice break through the complete silence. As the seconds stretched into minutes, and the fleeting hope became a distant memory, I began to take notice of just how quiet it was. I rushed to the window, pulling the curtains aside, reaffirming my realization. The storm had ended. With no more warning than it had arrived, the powerful winds had returned to a frigid breeze, and the world, no longer concealed under the blizzard, lay eerily still and silent under a fresh coat of snow. I couldn't help but feel that the timing was all too perfect. I called the police soon after. I told them the truth and fully prepared to be scrutinized perhaps even accused of playing some role in Evan's disappearance. It was a strange, impossible story that I was reluctant to tell. I'll never forget the looks in the eyes of the officers who'd arrived at the apartment to question me. They looked exhausted and afraid. And as I began to dive into the events of the night, the looks they exchanged between each other led me to believe that Evan's incident may not have been an isolated one. This isn't the first call we've gotten like that tonight. The shorter and slightly rounder officer started, pausing to cast a nervous glance over his shoulder. It's been real weird tonight. A lot of interesting stories seem to blow in with this storm. People seeing lights in the sky, strange markings in the snow. He shivered as a rogue breeze seemed to freeze in the air. He appeared all too eager to return to the safety of his cruiser, and I couldn't blame him. I too was suddenly feeling very exposed. The taller of the two officers cleared his throat abruptly, shooting his partner a strange look before turning his attention back to me. We'll look into it, the larger of the two said, a scowl seemingly carved into his face. In the meantime, I'd stay inside, he began his eyes seeming to stare through me. Strange weather. Best to be safe. I swallowed. The way he spoke made it clear that it wasn't the weather I should be worried about. The shorter officer bid me a farewell, and the two were gone. I stood there for a few moments longer, watching the cruiser disappear into the distance, leaving me alone. I stared out at the silent, snow-covered world around me for a few moments, my mind somewhere out by the nearby mountains, until my eyes drifted from the snowy peaks to the stars above. I stayed like that for a while, the events of earlier all replaying in my mind, until it had gotten too cold to remain there for any longer, and returned to my apartment. 
I no longer live in Colorado. In fact, I moved as far away from the snow as I could manage, transferring to a school in Texas. Still, when the nights get too quiet and the air takes on just the right sort of chill, my ghosts return. And I can't help but wonder about it all. I spend many nights in bed, strange and impossible conclusions being born of what little information I have, a constant series of discovery and dispute in my mind. Often, as my consciousness begins to fade, I can hear voices in my dreams, calling from wintry forests. The loudest among them is Evans. <laughs>